Chapter 6, Wednesday, May 29th, 1776. Quote from English author Samuel Johnson and his political pamphlet, Taxation No Tyranny. We are told that the subjection of Americans may tend to the diminution of our own liberties. How is it that we hear the loudest yelps for liberty among the drivers of Negroes? This way, the boy said as the carriage turned the corner. He headed away from the waterfront quick, without looking back. I picked up my skirts and ran after him. Please slow down, I called. He pushed ahead. I tried to follow. We hurried past the biggest houses I had ever seen, past shops and taverns and manufactories, past city city folk walking like their shoes were on fire. But I could not move fast enough, and I was losing sight of him in the crowd. You best slow down, I called. Folks about me muttered and frowned. The boy stopped in front of a tavern and waited, his mouth twisted in irritation. I trotted up to him so angry that steam came off the top of my head. You offer to help, then you abandon me? The words spilled out of my mouth. Where are we going? And why did she send me to buy water? Don't people here know about digging wells? He waited for a moment, then said, You ask a lot of questions. You give dull-witted answers, I shot back. Country girls are slow-moving, vexing creatures, he said. You are the vexatious one, I said, running off and leaving me like that? We stood, glaring at each other, him with his arms crossed over his chest, me trying to catch my breath. Inside the tavern, a woman argued with a man about a leaking cask of beer. On the street corner, an army officer yelled orders at four soldiers building a barricade out of logs, large stones, and barrels full of dirt. My heart finally slowed, my brow cooled off, and I wanted to give him a nasty pinch. Fool! I should have kept my temper. Now he would truly leave, and I would be lost in this terrible place, and there was no telling what Madame Lockton might do with Ruth in my absence. Apologies did not come natural to me, but I had no choice. I'm sorry I spoke so rudely. Hmm, he said, and I'm sorry I caused you a fright, country. Thank you, and my name is Isabel, not country. Apologies again, Miss Country Isabel, he said with a smile. I should have explained before. We're headed up to what folks call the tea water pump. Rich people get their water from there because it tastes the best. But first, I must deliver a message for my master. Stay here. He ducked inside a stationer's shop briefly and came out carrying a small parcel wrapped in brown paper and two fresh rolls steaming hot with butter oozing from their middles. Follow this away. We walked the length of an alley to a small courtyard. Someone had planted a garden there, and the first plants had come up. Peas, cabbage, and pennyroyal. Curzon handed me a roll and pointed to a tree stump. Figured you'd want to sit and eat a bite. I have no money, I said. I can't take this. It costs me nothing, he said. The baker's daughter likes the lad who works the press. She brings some extra breads and pies. Go ahead, eat. Half of my roll disappeared in one bite. It was the first decent food I'd had since Jenny's kitchen. Curzon watched me without saying a word. When I licked the butter off my fingers, he gave me his roll. I had a large breakfast, he said. My pride wanted to turn it down, but my belly was stronger. The second roll vanished as quick as the first. Thank you, I said when I'd finished. I'm beholden to you for that. Can we go now? I need to get back to my sister. He set his package on the tree stump. The littler one is your sister? That's why you took the blow meant for her, isn't it? A breeze ran through the courtyard, fluttering the leaves of the young pea plants and blowing cool across my cheek where Madame struck me. She needs watching over. He nodded. 
How long have you been with the Lockton's? Three days. Curzon listened carefully as I told how Madame and her husband bought us. Lockton is a dirty loyalist, he said when I finished. Loyalist or rebel, I don't care. I stood up from the stump and brushed the back of my skirt clean. Can we go? He nodded, picked up his package, and led me out of the alley. You feel beholden to Lockton? Pardon? He's going to feed you and your sister, give you a place to sleep. He can order you sold, beat, or hung if the mood takes him. That could make a person feel a kind of loyalty. I stopped considering this. Someday I'll find that lawyer in Miss Mary's will, and that'll free us. Until then, we need to eat, work, and stay together. So yes, I guess I'm loyal to Lockton. The words tasted bitter. Being loyal to the one who owned me gave me prickly thoughts, like burrs trapped in my shift, pressing into my skin with every step. We paused at a corner while a soldier drove a cart filled with barrels down the street. After we crossed, Curzon spoke so quiet I had to lean in to catch his words. You might be better served if you placed your loyalty with us. Who is us? My master and those he serves, the rebels, the Congress, were fighting for freedom from people like Lockton. I'm just fighting for me and Ruth. You can keep your rebellion. How much longer till this pump? He stopped beside a par- barricade. The brim of his hat cast a shadow and f- his face in shadow. You might hear things at the Lockton house. What kind of things? Useful things. Things that might help you get to that lawyer and your freedom. I frowned. I don't like riddles. Talk plain. New York is a ball tossed between the loyalty, loyalists and patriots. He said, scratching at the scar on his face. Right now, the patriots hold it. So? Lockton has returned to hurt our cause. Why don't they arrest him? It's not that simple. Plenty of folks hereabouts haven't decided which side they favor. One day they cheer General Washington, and the next day they toast the king. Putting Lockton in jail could turn them against us. He started walking again, nattering on and on about plots and conspiracies and battle plans and secrets, but truth be told, my mind drifted. I cared not a fig for politics nor soldiers. I was worried about my sister, and my cheeks still hurt. Will you help us or not? He stared at me intent as I tried to figure his meaning. It slowly dawned. You want me to be a spy? I asked. Are you funny in the head? Do you know what they would do to me? Shh, he warned. Keep your voice down. You just have to listen and alert me if you hear anything important. He won't be in any danger. You are a crazy fool. How do you know I won't tell Master Lockton you sought me out? Wouldn't matter if you did. He knows he's under suspicion. Might do you some good, bringing you favor in his eyes if you told him. But it would be a mistake. Lockton won't reward you. The Patriots can. Reward? Colonel Reagan is an officer in charge. He could send you back to Rhode Island, maybe. Help you find that lawyer in his papers. I pondered this. Was he lying? Could I trust this strange boy, filled with war and secrets? What would Mama do? I shook my head. It's too dangerous. I'll have enough to do with the chores and watching Ruth and keeping out of Madam's way. All you have to do is listen for talk of the king's troops. See, there you go again, proving you're a fool. They won't say anything in front of me. You are a small black girl, country, he said bitterly. You are a slave, not a person. They'll say things in front of you that they won't say in front of the white servants, because you don't count to them. It happens all the time to me. There was a truth in his words, hard truth, a hammer striking stone. If you hear something, 
come to Bellingham's house in the night, across from where your ship docked this morning. I sleep in the shed room. Tap on the window and I'll awake. I touched my cheek. I couldn't. I shouldn't. I can't, I said. I promised Mama I would take care of Ruth. Now can we go, please? 